So the browser screen we talked about. This is where the life is. You're in bacteria, or fungi, or protozoa, or nematodes. The plants leak these nutrients. The plants leak these exudates. And this is what attracts them. This is what. This is why the soil attaches to the roots because the life in there is building this aggregate. Without the aggregation, there's no infiltration. Without infiltration, you've lost. Okay. What builds aggregation? Microbiology. Okay. Tillage. I hate to say this over and over again, can only break down aggregation. It cannot build an aggregate. Only life can build aggregation. I'm not saying never till, especially in an organic system. Is it better to do one pass and do you know, tilt the garden once than it is to do a chemical garden down? That's really a matter of personal preference. But there are other ways to go about it. Life is going to come back and it's going to start to build our soil up. If you have to go through any you know, disc or rotor till or whatever, the key is start the healing process right away, plant right after. Keep something growing as long as you can. So, what you're saying is whether you have a sandy soil or a clay soil, Doesn't this matter. keeping those plants, creating Keep that. Keep plants. Okay. Keep plants. People with clay soil say, I got to till in the fall, because if I don't, it'll be too hard in the spring. That's circular logic. The reason it's hard in the spring is because we've degraded the resource. We're chasing our tail. We keep going back and forth and back and forth and doing the same thing where the soil becomes addicted to that tillage. And if you stop, it becomes concrete. Hmm. You can start the healing process by planting diverse plants in the system. I get it. I get it now. Okay. So instead of corn, followed by 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 corn. All of a sudden, you've got corn followed by winter rye, followed by something else, followed by something else, followed by something else. Then you have another you know, corn crop in there. The reason I'm using corn is that it's one of the predominant crops by in this country. Which takes us to this slide. So, if we're growing corn in our system, again, this is a USDA presentation, so we've got to talk about corn. The root biomass in the top six inch profile, the corn grows up, and then senesces, dies back, dries down, whatever you want to call it. It's about 950 pounds per acre in the top six inch profile. If we grow soybeans, which we don't do too much in this region, it's a lot less, about 350 pounds per acre. If we grow a cover crop after each one of these, which is just winter cereal rye, which is the number one most popular cover crop in this country, and hairy batch, which is a legume, Look at the amount of biomass in the soil compared to our cash crops. Which one does better for the soil? Remember, roots feed the system. The covers. You take the covers out of it. You feed the soil from here to here with exudates. And then from here to here, it's feeding on dead roots. And then from here to planting, it's feeding on the organic content, which means the organic matter in our soils drop. We can improve the organic content in our soils. We can improve our soils and still grow food. It doesn't matter if you're growing a one four foot by eight foot raised bed or your 5,000 acre grain farm. If you understand the principles of how soils function, you can increase soil organic content, you can mitigate climate change. And I can imagine nobody could disagree with that. Sequester carbon, Spend less money on fertilizer, spend less time out there on the tractor or on the rotiller or out there doing whatever you have to do, and improve the resource.